Can animals learn from other animals? Yes, animals can learn from other animals. Researchers observing the behavior of Japanese macaques would leave pieces of potato on the beach of the island where the study occurred. Every day the macaques would spend their time carefully cleaning the sand off their treats. Then one day a young female carried her potato to the sea, where she rinsed it off. Soon her mother was following her example. And then other females as well until finally the entire troop had learned the behavior. What is unique about egg incubation in some amphibians? Unlike most toads and frogs the female Suriname toad, Pipa Pipa, carries her eggs in special pockets in the skin on her back. Each egg develops in its own pocket in the female's skin. The tadpole's tails are plugged into the mother's system. Similar to the placenta of mammals, exchanging nutrients and gases. The tadpoles develop quickly, undergoing metamorphosis while still in the pockets. Upon transformation into miniature frogs, they break free of their pocket walls to begin independent lives. What methods are used to estimate wildlife populations? Since it is usually impossible, and often impractical, to count all individuals in a population. Researchers use a variety of sampling techniques to estimate population densities. One method is to count the individuals in a certain area. The larger the number and size of sample plots, the more accurate the estimates. Population densities may also be estimated based on indirect indicators such as animal droppings or tracks, nests, or burrows. What is the first structure to emerge following germination? The first structure to emerge following germination is the radical or embryonic root. The radical allows the developing seedling to become anchored in the soil and to absorb water. This first root, the primary root, develops branch roots called lateral roots. The lateral roots send out additional lateral roots, eventually creating the multi-branched root system. How are mushrooms grown commercially? The most common, commercially grown mushroom is the white button mushroom, Agaricus bisporus. Mushroom farms consist of special planting beds in buildings. With temperature and humidity conditions that are controlled. The beds contain soil mixed with a material that is rich in organic matter. The beds are inoculated with mushroom spawn a pure culture of the mushroom fungus grown in large bottles on an organic rich medium. 
the mycelium grows and spreads throughout the soil mixture for several weeks. Mushroom formation is induced by adding a layer of casing soil to the surface of the bed. Mushrooms appear on the surface of the bed through a process known as a flash. Mushrooms must be collected immediately after flashing, while they are still fresh. Who was the first individual to study animal behavior? Aristotle, 384-322b. C.E., wrote ten volumes on the natural history of animals. The Roman naturalist Pliny, 23-79 CE Also extensively observed and recorded observations of organisms in his book Natural History. In more recent times Charles Darwin, 1809-1882, recorded In his journal, The Behavior of the Marine Iguanas of the Galapagos Islands Darwin also published a book, The Expression of the Emotions of Man and Animals, 1872, in which he showed how natural selection would favor specialized behavioral patterns for survival. However, it was not until 1953, when Nico Tinbergen 1907-1988 documented and published his studies of gulls, the herring gulls world, and their begging techniques. That the field of ethology the study of animal behavior was established. What is unique about the marine iguanas of the Galapagos? The marine iguanas of the Galapagos show evidence of unique behavioral adaptations to their environment. They are strictly vegetarian and are able to swim. In effect, they are the cows of the Galapagos, taking on the role of primary consumers. How is an ant colony organized? Ants are the dominant social insects and, numerically, the most abundant. At any one time there are at least 1,015, 1 quadrillion, ants alive on the planet. In general, Ant colonies contain a variety of castes, groups of individuals with a common job. Like workers or soldiers, and a queen who is in charge of egg laying. For example, the largest and most aggressive workers make up the soldier caste. Whose job it is to protect the colony against dangerous invaders. Because of the way that sex is determined among ants, males are haploid. Contain one set of chromosomes, while females are diploid, two sets of chromosomes. This causes a close interrelatedness among members of a colony that is theorized as one of the reasons for the evolution of social colonies. What types of variations are there in plant stems? Plant stems show variation in size and shape. In addition, 
some plants have modified stems. For example, the strawberry plant has stolons or runners, which are horizontal stems that grow along the surface of the ground. Iris plants also have horizontal stems called rhizomes. Rhizomes are large, brownish, root-like structures found just below the surface of the ground. The rhizomes store food and can spread to form new plants. White potato plants also have rhizomes. The rhizomes of the white potato plant end in large, round structures called tubers. The tubers are the part of the plant that we call potatoes and eat. Tendrils and twining shoots of the morning glory and Sweet potato coil around objects and help support the plant. What effect do pH levels have on the growth of bacteria? pH is the measure of the hydrogen ion activity of a solution. The pH scale ranges from 0, very acidic, to 14, extremely alkaline or basic. The pH, or concentration of hydrogen ions, H+, in an environment, is critical to bacterial growth because it can affect enzyme activity. An extremely high or low pH can denatur and inactivate enzymes, or disrupt cell processes. An environment's pH level dramatically affects the growth of bacteria and other microorganisms. Each species has an optimum pH level to sustain growth, as well as a range of pH levels in which they are able to survive. Acidophiles have their growth optimum between pH 0 and 5.5, neutrophils, between pH 5.5 and 8.0. And alkalophiles prefer the pH range of 8.5 to 11.5. Extreme alkalophiles have optimum growth at pH 10 or higher. The following table shows the pH ranges and the optimum pH that several different organisms require for growth. Why are big and fierce animals rare? Because the transfer of energy from one individual to another is inefficient. Only about 10% of the energy used to build a tasty worm actually is available to the hungry robin who eats it. As we move through the levels of the food web, each predator or predator grouping tends to become bigger and more aggressive, fiercer, than the last. However, the amount of energy available to each level continues to decline, so there is very little room at the top of the web for a predator large enough and fierce enough to consume all the others. In fact, it is estimated that only 1 slash 1000 th of the energy brought into the system by photosynthesis actually makes it to the hawk or owl at the top of such a system. Less energy available means that fewer individuals can be supported. So big, fierce animals tend to be rare in their ecosystems. What is biopreservation?
Biopreservation refers to the preservation and enhanced safety of food using biological materials. An example of this is nicin, a bacterial protein that can act as a broad-spectrum antibiotic. Nicin cannot be synthesized chemically. So the nicin-producing bacteria lactobacillus must be used to generate the protein. Who first proposed a model for the plasma membrane? Following the earlier work of Gorter and Grendel on cell membranes, Hugh Davson (1909–1996) and James F. Danielli (1911–1984) proposed a sandwich model for the structure of cell membranes in 1935 this model was a phospholipid bilayer between two layers of globular proteins. Since cell membranes are so fragile in vivo, one can only propose theoretical models for their structure. Current techniques still do not permit direct observation of the functioning of plasma membranes. How do brain cells function differently in people with Alzheimer's disease? The buildup of toxic proteins, plagues, in the brains of Alzheimer's patients is linked to changes in several genes that regulate memory and learning. The protein responsible for this effect is a small peptide, beta amyloid. This protein is made by the body throughout the entire lifetime. But in Alzheimer's patients, either too much is synthesized or too little is broken down. The buildup of plaque has been implicated in neuron death, which eventually leads to dementia. Researchers have studied mice that were genetically engineered with genes to cause them to accumulate beta amyloid deposits in their brain. The mice developed neurological problems consistent with Alzheimer's disease that occurs in humans. Results from the tests performed on mice indicated that the functions of at least six genes were suppressed in the presence of the renegade protein. Can all anabolic steroid use be detected? One of the newest designer steroids is tetrahydrogestrinone. THG. This chemical is not detected by routine urine tests and has been classified as a nutritional supplement. However, according to the Food and Drug Administration (FDA), THG is related to two other synthetic anabolic steroids, gestrinone and trenbolone. Tetrahydrogestrinone is designed to boost muscle mass and strength, however. Dangerous side effects include benign and malignant liver tumors, hepatitis. Aggressive mood swings, decreased fertility, acne, and an increased risk of heart attacks. A new test has been developed that can detect THG in urine samples. What are the different types of soil?
soil is the weathered outer layer of the Earth's crust. It is a mixture of tiny rock fragments and organic matter. There are three broad categories of soils, clay, sandy, and loam. Clay soils are heavy with the particles sticking close together. Most plants have a hard time absorbing the nutrients in clay soil. And the soil tends to become waterlogged. Clay soils can be good for a few deep-rooted plants, such as mint, peas, and broad beans. Sandy soils are light and have particles that do not stick together. Sandy soil is good for many alpine and arid plants, some herbs such as tarragon and thyme. And vegetables such as onions, carrots, and tomatoes. Loam soils are a well-balanced mix of smaller and larger particles. They provide nutrients to plant roots easily, they drain well, and they also retain water very well. Loams are considered ideal for plant growth. What is the electromagnetic spectrum? The electromagnetic spectrum is the range of wavelengths. It ranges from gamma rays with very short wavelengths, 10 to 5. And high energy through radio waves with longer wavelengths, 103 meters, and less energy. Visible light, seen as color, occurs between 380 and 750. Ultraviolet light has a shorter wavelength, while infrared light has a greater wavelength. Do cells have specific shapes? While it doesn't seem that animal cells have a specific shape, they all have a cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton enables cells to assume and maintain complex shapes. Such as the star-like shape of a neuron or the biconcave shape of a red blood cell. Epithelial and connective tissues also have very particular shapes. The columnar epithelium resembles a wall of bricks. Plant cells usually have a specific shape due to their rigid cell wall, which decreases the elasticity of the cell. How is petrified wood formed? Petrified wood is formed when water containing dissolved minerals such as calcium carbonate, CACO3, and silicate, infiltrate wood or plants. The foreign materials either replace or enclose the organism. So the structural details of the plant are retained. The process takes thousands of years. Botanists find these types of fossils to be very important since they allow for the study of the internal structure of extinct plants. After time passes, the plant or wood seems to have turned to stone because the original form and structure are retained, but it does not actually turn into stone. History
the identification of the remains of the victims from the September 11, 2001. Terrorist attacks in New York City has comprised the largest and most difficult DNA identification to date. After 1.6 million tons of debris were removed from the site of the attacks on the World Trade Center, only 239 intact bodies, out of 2,795, were found, along with about 20,000 pieces of human remains. In order to match DNA profiles to the bodies, personal items such as razor blades, combs, and toothbrushes were collected from the victims' homes. When possible, cheek swabs were taken from the victims' family members for comparison with remains. The identification process was still ongoing as of mid-2004. How does a homing pigeon find its way home? Scientists currently have two hypotheses to explain the homing flight of pigeons. Neither has been proved to the satisfaction of all the experts. The first hypothesis involves an odor map. This theory proposes that young pigeons learn how to return to their original point of departure by smelling different odors that reach their home in winds from varying directions. They would, for example, learn that a certain odor is carried on winds blowing from the east. If a pigeon were transported eastward, the odor would tell it to fly westward to return home. The second hypothesis proposes that a bird may be able to extract its home's latitude and longitude from the Earth's magnetic field. It may be proven in the future that neither theory explains the pigeon's navigational abilities or that some synthesis of the two theories is the actual mechanism. How does the term negative feedback apply to metabolism? Negative feedback is a cellular process that is similar to the manner in which an air conditioner operates. An air conditioner can be set to a certain temperature. And when the surrounding air reaches the set temperature, the air conditioner shuts off. Negative feedback is part of the homeostatic process through which cells conserve energy by synthesizing products only for their immediate needs. How do conservationists predict whether a species will become extinct? Conservation biologists use population viability analysis, PVA, a relatively new method, to predict the viability of a species in a particular habitat. Computer modeling generates PVAs using life history data, genetic variability, and a population's response to environmental conditions especially disturbances to predict viability of a species. How did the introduction of the potato to Europe lead to a devastating famine in Ireland?
the white potato, Selenum tuberosum, native to South America, was first introduced to Spain in the middle of the 16th century. It was not widely accepted as a food crop since European relatives of the potato, such as nightshade, mandrake, and henbane, were known to be poisonous or hallucinogenic. In fact, all of the above ground parts of a potato plant are poisonous and only the tuber is edible. The potato was established as a food crop in Ireland as early as 1625 and became a staple of the diet. Especially among the poor, during the 18th and early 19th centuries. The widespread dependence on potatoes as a main source of food led to massive starvation. When the plant pathogen Phytophthora infestans destroyed potato fields in the 1840s, over one million Irish people died from starvation or subsequent disease. Another 1.5 million emigrated from Ireland. What are ribozymes? Ribozymes are often referred to as molecular scissors that cut RNA. They were discovered in the early 1980s by Sidney Altman, 1939, and Thomas Seck, 1947 who won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for their work in 1989. The ability of ribozymes to recognize and cut specific sequences of RNA allows certain genes to be turned off. Ribozymes are now being used in human genetic studies. Do all females take care of their offspring? While females are the most common primary caregivers, in some species, e. g. c. orzas, males are the primary caregivers for their offspring. Male parental care may be as simple as defending the nest against potential predators. Or as time-consuming as providing food and the shelter of their bodies for young hatchlings. In other species such as guppies, no parental care by either sex is provided. What are the major groups of segmented worms? Members of the phylum Anlida, the segmented worms, have bilateral symmetry and a tubular body that may have 100 to 175 ring like segments. The three classes of segmented worms are, 1, polychaeta, the sandworms, and tube worms. 2, oligochaeta, the earthworms, and 3, hirudinia, the leeches. What are X-rays? X-rays are electromagnetic radiation with short wavelengths, 10 to 3, and a great amount of energy. They were discovered in 1898 by William Conrad Rentgen, 1845 to 1923. X-rays are frequently used in medicine because they are able to pass through opaque 
Dense structures such as bone and form an image on a photographic plate. What are the different types of plastids? Proplastids can differentiate into several types of plastids that are involved in cellular storage. Amyloplasts store starch, proteinoplasts store proteins, and aleoplasts store lipids. In addition, some proplastids develop into chromoplasts. When were bacteriophages first discovered? Bacteriophages were discovered in the early 1900s by Frederick W. Tort, 1877 to 1950, a British scientist, and Felix D. Harrell, 1873 to 1949. A French scientist. In 1915 Tort reported observing a filterable agent that destroyed bacteria growing on solid media. D. Harrell independently confirmed the discovery in 1917. It was actually D. Harrell who named the agent bacteriophage. However, very few scientists accepted these findings and the work on the growth and infectious nature of bacteriophages. It was not until the 1930s that Martin Schlesinger, a German biochemist, characterized bacteriophages, establishing their own unique place in the microbial world. What is transduction? Transduction is the process by which a vector, usually a bacteriophage, carries DNA from one bacterium to another bacterium. It can be used experimentally to map bacterial genes. What factors have contributed to an increase in the number of resistant bacteria? Bacteria mutate in order to adapt to new conditions. A mutation that enables a microbe to survive in the presence of an antibiotic quickly spreads throughout a microbial population. Since bacteria replicate very rapidly, a mutation can swiftly become prevalent. The overuse of antibiotics promotes the emergence of resistant bacteria. Antibiotics may also be prescribed for viral infections that they are not effective against. Furthermore, Patients often fail to follow the directions for taking antibiotics precisely. A prescribed dose of antibiotics should be taken until it is completed. Although an individual can feel better shortly after starting a treatment. Not completing the full course of antibiotics often destroys only the most vulnerable bacteria. Relatively resistant bacteria are able to survive and prosper in a human's body. Because antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria do not respond to standard treatments. Illnesses are able to last for longer periods of time and can result in death. The proliferation of resistant bacteria has made it more difficult to establish effective treatments.
What animals are members of the phylum Nidaria? Corals, jellyfishes, sea anemones, and hydras are members of the phylum Nidaria. The name Nidaria, from the Greek term nid, meaning nettle, and Latin term aria, meaning like or connected with, refers to the stinging structures that are characteristic of some of these animals. These organisms have a digestive cavity with only one opening to the outside. This opening is surrounded by a ring of tentacles used to capture food and defend against predators. Cells in the tentacles and outer body surface contain stinging, harpoon-like structures called nematocysts. Nadarians are the first group in the animal hierarchy to have their cells organized into tissues. What are different ways of defining the term species? A species may be defined in a number of ways. The biological species concept defines any two individuals that can breed and produce fertile offspring as belonging to the same species. This would mean that lions and tigers would be considered the same species. As they can produce hybrid offspring there is at least one case of a tigon. The offspring of a male tiger and a female lion, producing offspring after an unplanned mating with a tiger. Other concepts include the phylogenetic species concept which bases species determination on the shared evolutionary history of the populations in question. What is spectroscopy? Spectroscopy includes a range of techniques to study the composition, structure, and bonding of elements and compounds. The different methods of spectroscopy use different wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum to study atoms, molecules, ions, and the bonding between them. What is a gene? A gene is a specific sequence of DNA that contains the molecular recipe for a polypeptide. A polypeptide is a subunit of a protein. In the life cycles of bryophytes, which is dominant, the sporophyte or gametophyte. In all of the bryophytes mosses, liverworts, and hornworts gametophytes are the most conspicuous, dominant phase. A mat of moss consists of haploid gametophytes. Sporophytes are typically smaller and present only part of the time. How is a fairy ring formed? Long ago it was believed that the circles of mushrooms that sometimes form in meadows marked the locations where fairies gathered at night to dance. 
Fairy rings, or fungus rings, are frequently found in grassy areas. There are three types of rings, those that do not affect their surrounding vegetation. Those that cause increased vegetational growth, and those that damage their surrounding environment. The rings are started from a mycelium, the underground, food absorbing part of a fungus. The fungus growths are circular because a round inner band of decaying mycelium forms underground. This band uses up the resources present in the soil that is directly above it. When the fungus forms caps that present above ground. The mushrooms grow around the mycelium, creating a ring effect. Each succeeding generation grows further from the center. Why is the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae important in genetic research? Biologists have studied Saccharomyces cerevisiae, a yeast used by bakers and brewers. For many decades because it offers valuable clues to aid in the understanding of how more advanced organisms work. For example, humans and yeast share a number of similarities in their genetic makeup. The DNA present in certain regions of yeast contain stretches of DNA subunits that are nearly identical to those in human DNA. These similarities indicate that humans and yeast both have similar genes that play a critical role in cell function. In 1996 an international consortium of scientists from the United States, Canada, Europe, and Japan completed the genome sequence, all 12,057,500 subunits contained in the nuclear DNA of S. cerevisiae. It is the first eukaryotic organism to be completely sequenced. With their rapid generation time, yeasts continue to be the organism of choice. To provide significant insights into the functioning of eukaryotic systems. What is the importance of an external egg in reproduction? Species that have an external egg usually produce a greater number of zygotes. Because mating between males and females is not required for successful reproduction. The external egg of most species has a leathery outer covering to prevent desiccation. What is a metabolic pathway? A metabolic pathway is a series of interconnected reactions that share common mechanisms. Each reaction is dependent on a specific precursor, a chemical, an enzyme, or the transfer of energy. One of the first studies of metabolic pathways was carried out in 1909 by the British physician Archibald Garrod, 1857-1936. His study suggested a link between the inability to make a particular enzyme and inherited disease. The disease was alcaptanuria, a condition in which urine darkens upon exposure to air. Due to the presence of the chemical alcapton. Garrett's discovery was one of the first incidents of a physical 
manifestation being tied to a specific metabolic disorder. How does a dominant trait differ from a recessive trait? A dominant trait is one that is expressed whenever present. Either as a homozygous genotype, DD, or a heterozygous one, DD. In other words, dominance means that a heterozygote carrying only one copy of the dominant allele, will display the dominant phenotype. The term dominant does not infer that this is more normal or common than a recessive trait. In contrast, recessive phenotypes always result from a genotype in which alleles are alike. Recessive traits seem to be more common in a population than dominant traits. Sometimes an allele is a no signal message. Meaning that no functional polypeptide will be made from its expression. What is pith? Pith is the ground tissue, consisting usually of parenchyma. In the center of the root or stem within the vascular cylinder. What are the three types of photoreceptors among invertebrates? There are three different types of eyes. Represented by different types of photoreceptors, among invertebrates. They are, 1, eye cup, 2, compound eye, and 3, single lens eye. The eye cup is a cluster of photoreceptor cells that partially shield adjacent photoreceptor cells. The compound eye consists of many tiny light detectors, photoreceptors. Crayfish, crabs, and nearly all insects have compound eyes. Single lens eyes, found in cephalopods such as squids and octopi, are similar to cameras. They have a small opening, the pupil, through which light enters. What is Taxol? Taxol is a drug used to treat ovarian cancer. It freezes cancer cells early in the process of cell division. When the cells are unable to divide, they eventually die. Taxol is obtained from the bark of the Pacific U, Taxus brevifolia. A gymnosperm that grows in the Pacific Northwest. Because the Pacific U is a small tree that grows slowly and is not found in abundance, researchers have synthesized Taxol. What is nuclear magnetic resonance imaging? Magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, sometimes called nuclear magnetic resonance imaging. NMR, is a non-invasive, noni-onizing diagnostic technique. It is useful in detecting small tumors, blocked blood vessels, 
or damaged vertebral discs. Because it does not involve the use of radiation, it can often be used where X-rays are dangerous. Large magnets beam energy through the body, causing hydrogen atoms in the body to resonate. This produces energy in the form of tiny electrical signals. A computer detects these signals, which vary in different parts of the body and according to whether an organ is healthy or not. The variation enables a picture to be produced on a screen and interpreted by a medical specialist. What distinguishes MRI from computerized X-ray scanners is that most X-ray studies cannot distinguish between a living body and a cadaver. While MRI sees the difference between life and death in great detail. More specifically, it can discriminate between healthy and diseased tissues with more sensitivity than conventional radiographic instruments like X-rays or CAT scans. CAT, Computerized Axial Tomography Scanners have been around since 1973 and are actually glorified X-ray machines. They offer three-dimensional viewing but are limited because the object imaged must remain still. What are the three major groups of chordates? The chordates are divided into three subphyla, tunicata, cephalochordata, and vertebrata. Tunicates are like little leathery bags that are either free-living or attached to pilings. Rocks and seaweeds. They are also called sea squirts because a disturbed animal may contract and shoot streams of water from both of its siphons. The subphylum cephalochordata contains the amphioxus or lancelet, branchiostoma, which looks like a small fish and has the three chaudate features as an adult. Amphioxus also shows clear serial segmentation or metamerism. From the Greek terms meta, meaning between, among, after, and miras, meaning part. It is divided lengthwise into a series of muscle segments. Vertebrates, which comprise the thirchaudate subphylum retain the same metamerism in internal structures. How sensitive is the hearing of birds? In most species of birds the most important sense after sight is hearing. Birds ears are close to their bodies and covered with feathers. However, the feathers covering the ears do not have barbules, which would obstruct sound. Ears of different heights allow the bird to locate of sound. Nocturnal raptors such as the great horned owl have a very well developed sense of hearing in order to be able to capture their prey in total darkness. What is the first wild flower to bloom each year in the northern portions of the United States? The first flower to bloom during spring in the northern section 
of the United States is rarely seen because it blooms in swamps. Spathyma fetitis, commonly called skunk cabbage, appears in northern swamps during February. The first wildflower to bloom each year in New England and the Midwest is typically hepatica. Also known as liver leaf, which blooms in March or early April. How does an independent variable differ from a dependent variable? An independent variable is manipulated and controlled by the researcher. A dependent variable is the variable that the researcher watches and slash or measures. It is called a dependent variable because it depends upon and is affected by the independent variable. What is the oldest genus of living trees? The genus Ginkgo, commonly known as maidenhair trees, comprises the oldest living trees. This genus is native to China, where it has been cultivated for centuries. It has not been found in the wild and it is likely that it would have become extinct had it not been cultivated. Fossils of 200 million year old ginkgos show that the modern day ginkgo is nearly identical to its forerunner. As of the early 21st century, only one living species of ginkgo remains. Ginkgo biloba. The fleshy coverings of the seeds produced by females of the species G. Biloba have a distinctly foul odor. Horticulturists prefer to cultivate the male plant from shoots to avoid the odor and mess created by the female tree. Which type of nitrogenous waste do various species of animals excrete? Since it is highly toxic, excretion of pure ammonia is possible only for aquatic animals. Because ammonia is very soluble in water. Urea and uric acid are excreted by terrestrial animals. Urea is approximately 100,000 times less toxic than ammonia. So it may be stored in the body and eliminated with relatively little water loss. Uric acid requires very little water for disposal and is often excreted as a paste or dry powder. An example is guano, the solid white droppings of seabirds and bats. How much wood is used for each Sunday edition of the New York Times? More than 150 acres of forest are cut down for each Sunday edition of the New York Times. Most of the world's paper comes from wood pulp. In the United States each person uses an average of 731 pounds. 322 kilograms of paper per year, or 2 pounds, 910 g, per day. Less than 50% of paper is recycled. Recycling 4 feet 1.2 meters of newspapers would save a 40 feet 12 meters tall tree.
What compounds are important in the coloration of flowers? Color is one of the most conspicuous features of angiosperm flowers. All flower colors are produced by a small number of pigments. Many red, orange, or yellow flowers owe their color to the presence of carotenoid pigments similar to those that occur in leaves. The most important pigments in floral coloration are flavonoids. An important group of flavonoids, the anthocyanins, are major determinants of flower color. The three major anthocyanin pigments are, 1, pelargonidin, red, 2, cyanidin, violet, and 3, delphinidin, blue. Related compounds, known as flavanols, are yellow, ivory, or white. Mixtures of these different pigments, together with changes in cellular pH, produce the entire range of flower color in the angiosperms. When was DNA fingerprinting developed? Sir Alec Jeffries, 1950, a geneticist, developed DNA fingerprinting in the early 1980s. When he was studying inherited genetic variations between people. He was one of the first scientists to describe small DNA changes. Referred to as single nucleotide polymorphisms, SNPs. From SNPs, he began to look at tandem repeat DNA sequences. In which a short sequence of DNA was consecutively repeated many times. What cheeses are associated with fungi? The unique flavor of cheeses such as Roquefort, Camembert, and Brie is produced by members of the genus Penicillium. Roquefort is often referred to as the king of cheeses. It is one of the oldest and best known cheeses in the world. This blue cheese has been enjoyed since Roman times and was a favorite of Charlemagne. King of the Franks and Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, 742 to 814. Roquefort is made from sheep's milk that has been exposed to the mold. Penicillium Roqueforti and aged for three months or more in the limestone caverns of Mount Komalu. Near the village of Roquefort in southwestern France. This is the only place true Roquefort can be aged. It has a creamy, rich texture and a flavor that is simultaneously pungent, piquant, and salty. It has a creamy white interior marked by blue veins, the cheese is held together with a snowy white rind. True Roquefort is authenticated by the presence of a red sheep on the emblem present on the cheese's wrapper. Penicillium camemberti gives camembert and brie cheeses their special qualities. Napoleon is said to have christened camembert cheese with its name. Supposedly the name comes from the Norman village where a farmer's wife first served it to Napoleon. This cheese is formed of cow's milk and has a white, downy rind and a smooth, creamy interior. 
when perfectly ripe and served at room temperature, the cheese should ooze thickly. Although brie is made in many places, brie from the region of the same name. East of Paris is considered one of the world's finest cheeses by connoisseurs. Similar to camembert, it has a white, surface ripened rind and smooth, buttery interior. Do seedless watermelons occur naturally? Seedless watermelon was first introduced in 1988 after 50 years of research. A seedless watermelon plant requires pollen from a seeded watermelon plant. Farmers frequently plant seeded and seedless plants close together and depend on bees to pollinate the seedless plants. The white seeds, also known as pods, found in seedless watermelons serve to hold a fertilized egg and embryo. Because a seedless melon is sterile and fertilization cannot take place. Pods do not harden and become a black seed, as occurs in seeded watermelons. What is RNA splicing? In eukaryotes, the RNA transcript may be modified before it is sent to the cytoplasm to be translated into a protein. This process is known as RNA splicing or post-transcriptional processing. From an evolutionary standpoint, this ability to edit the message allows greater variety of expression from a finite set of genes. Current research indicates that most eukaryotic genes are interrupted or discontinuous that is. The mRNA produced from the DNA sequence has had intervening nucleotides removed. What is a spliceosome? A spliceosome is a structure, comprised of RNA and protein, that is responsible for RNA splicing in the eukaryotic nucleus. In what ways are earthworms beneficial? Earthworms help maintain fertile soil. An earthworm literally eats its way through soil and decaying vegetation. As it moves about, the soil is turned, aerated, and enriched by nitrogenous wastes. Charles Darwin, 1809 to 1882, calculated that a single earthworm could eat its own weight in soil every day. Much of what is eaten is then excreted on the earth's surface in the form of casts. The worms then rebury these casts with their burrowing process. In addition, Darwin claimed that 2.5 acres, 1 hectare of soil might contain 155,000 earthworms, which in one year would bring 18 tons of soil to the surface and in 20 years might build a new layer 3 in, 11 centimeters, thick.
What part of the American chestnut tree does the fungus Cryphonectria parasitica attack? Cryphonectria parasitica, or chestnut blight, attacks a tree's layers of living bark and the adjacent layers of wood. The fungus kills the cells present in the bark that serve the function of carrying the food made in the leaves of a tree to other parts of a tree. As such, nutrients are not able to reach various parts of a tree. The fungus also clogs the cells present in the wood of a tree's trunk that serve to carry water and nutrients through the body of a tree. This fungus leaves the roots of a tree unaffected, allowing a tree to send up new sprouts. However, within a number of years, the bark and wood of new sprouts also become affected. What are the potential uses of stem cells? Stem cells could be used to grow new hearts that could be transplanted without fear of rejection. They could be used to renew the function of injured structures like the spinal cord. They could be used as cell models for drug testing, thereby increasing the speed for finding cures. Why do puffer fishes puff? Puffer fishes are any of a number of species found in warm seas that use a special adaptation of the gullet to inflate their bodies to nearly twice the normal size. Puffer fishes, blowfishes, and their like do this in response to a perceived threat. The increased size and unpalatable looking spines make the potential prey look quite unappetizing to predators. Can people have missing or extra chromosomes? Yes, people can live with this chromosomal abnormality. Depending on which chromosomes are copied or missing. Examples of these conditions include Down syndrome, an extra copy of chromosome 21, and Turner syndrome. A female with only one X chromosome, both of which can result in healthy babies. Conversely, almost 1% of all conceptions are triploid. Three copies of each chromosome, but over 99% of these die before birth. Who was the first person to receive gene therapy? In 1990 Ashanti da Silva, a four-year-old with severe combined immune deficiency, SCID, had her white blood cells removed and replaced with a normal copy of the defective gene. SCID is a life-threatening disease in which patients lack a healthy immune system due to the inability to produce an important enzyme, adenosine deaminase. Although the treatment proved safe and her immune system was strengthened, the treated cells failed to give rise to additional healthy cells.
In order to maintain normal levels of adenosine deaminase, De Silva must take doses of the enzyme itself. What are some interesting features of jellyfishes? Jellyfishes live close to the shores of most oceans and spend most of their time floating near the surface. Jellyfishes have bell-shaped bodies that are between 95% and 96% water. They have a muscular ring around the margin of the bell. That contracts rhythmically to propel them through the water. Jellyfishes are carnivores. Subduing their prey with stinging tentacles and drawing the paralyzed animal into the digestive cavity. Jellyfishes are gelatinous you can see through their bodies. What types of tissue systems are found in plants? Vascular plants have three tissue systems, the vascular tissue system, the ground tissue system, and the dermal or epidermis tissue system. The tissue systems are found in all parts of the plant the roots, stem, and leaves. What traits of peas did Mendel study? Mendel studied peas of distinct and recognizable plant varieties. Mendel's experiments included the characteristics of height, flower color, pea color, pea shape, pod color, and the position of flowers on the stem. At what speeds do fishes swim? The maximum swimming speed of a fish is somewhat determined by the shape of its body and tail and by its internal temperature. The cosmopolitan sailfish, Istiophorus platypterus, is considered to be the fastest fish species. At least for short distances, swimming at greater than 60 miles per hour, 95 kilometers per hour. Some American fishermen, however, believe that the bluefin tuna, Thunnus thinnus is the fastest, but the fastest speed recorded for this species so far is 43.4 miles per hour, 69.8 kilometers per hour. Data is extremely difficult to secure because of the practical difficulties in measuring the speeds. The yellowfin tuna, Thunnus albicares, and the waoi. Acanthocybium solandri, are also fast. Timed at 46.35 miles per hour, 74.5 kilometers per hour, and 47.88 miles per hour, 77 kilometers per hour, respectively during 10 to 20 second sprints. Flying fish swim at 40 plus mph, 64 plus kilometers per hour, Dolphins at 37 miles per hour. 60 kilometers per hour, trout at 15 miles per hour, 24 kilometers per hour, and blenny at 5 miles per hour, 8 kilometers per hour. Humans can swim 5.19 miles per hour, 8.3 kilometers per hour.
When was DNA first discovered? DNA was first discovered in 1869 by Johann Friedrich Miescher, 1844-1895. He isolated and described what he called nuclein, which eventually became known as deoxyribonucleic acid (DNA), the genetic information of the cell. What is the structure of a ribosome? A ribosome is composed of two parts known as the large and small subunits. Each of these is a combination of protein and a type of RNA known as rRNA. At the beginning of translation, the two subunits form a structure around the mRNA molecule as the first tRNA. The one matching the first methionine or FMET, arrives. The completed ribosome has niches that hold up to three tRNAs at a time. Because a cell has so many ribosomes at any one time, rRNA is the most common type of RNA found in cells. What is the Human Genome Project, HGP, and what are its goals? The HGP was begun in 1990 as a 13-year effort and was slated to be completed in 2003. According to the official HGP website, http colon slash slash www.dogenomes.org, the goals are as follows. Identify all of the approximately 30,0040,000 genes. In human DNA determine the sequence of the 3 billion chemical pairs of human DNA store this. Information in public databases improve tools for data analysis transfer related technologies to. The private sector address the ethical, legal and social issues that may stem from the project.